Hello, uh, this is my diesel heater build in a cooler. I had the dimensions for all of my equipment in my phone for a while and I'd just look at thrift stores for any kind of container that I could put my stuff in and I finally found this guy at it's this quick serve 40 quart Coleman cooler for eight bucks thought I'd give it a try uh, it is tight uh, I liked that it had this top hatch I thought I could use that for some controller controls and stuff which I did but let me get, get into it <clears throat> so the air intake here I've, I've got two different sort of options I guess just using the ducting that came with it um, on a I forget what this type of uh, reducer it's not a reducer it's a I think it's a two inch um, coupler so you can put two ducts together that worked well with this I think it's two to three inch um, adapter so this can slide on like that if I'm using it say inside a tent and pumping my exhaust out fits on there really well just or I can I've got another uh, worm gear uh, strap thing I don't know where I put it but I, it has the kind of <laughs> a nut that you can take on and off easily I've got one on the other side but for some reason I lost this one out in the shop somewhere but anyway for now that works. That's my air intake. Put a strap on it because it is heavy <laughs> to carry. Um, but I found that this works really well carrying it. I haven't weighed the thing yet, but I've got a 50 amp hour battery in here. The I forget the size of the gas tank that came with it, but I got the Vivor upright. Um, unit and just took took that apart modified the gas cap so that for transportation it wouldn't leak watched I don't know how many YouTube videos other people doing these builds and this one seems to work well so when I run it I just take this off but this uh, cooler has a nice raised area right there that works perfect for that um, so there you can see my peripheral electronics that most of which are unneeded and just this is just kind of a fun little build i'll probably take some of those things off but for now that's what i what i have um so hot air out over here i made the exhaust so it was easy to so when it's connected, I'll attach this to the strap there, but um, because we're working with a cooler, I use these threaded nuts that you put in with an Allen wrench, and those work awesome with coolers, I've found out. So um, I used one also with mounting the fuel pump, so if I'm taking that fuel pump out, it's easy to do, and I'm not constantly you know screwing in and out of plastic which will eventually wear out so this is the connection thing that I was talking about I've got two of these but I don't know where the other one went so right now this is my setup <laughs> because the exhaust is right underneath the uh, hot air duct so cooler or the coffee can keeps keeps I don't know, keeps it from melting the insulated duct that goes under the skirt and into my tent. I've run this with it well, well, when it was still in the upright case that it came in. And anyway, this does not get hot at all. Uh, it's cold to the touch. I love this. Um, I've seen other people using the, it's a dual wall um, duct 
that might work fine for going under the skirt, but it'd be easier to pack too. But for now, this actually does shrink up pretty small. Um, and that's what I'm using for now. That's what they had at the local hardware store. So um, for now, that works. And this comes off and I can store it inside. Um, cannot store the ductwork <laughs> and stuff inside, but that fits right in there and closes up just fine. So on the inside, I'm running all my electronics through this one um, XT60 connection. I love these little clips. I've got a Bluetooth um, battery monitor that I can read with my phone. That's connected directly to the battery. Everything else goes through this, um, which I like. I can unplug. This goes to this monitor and the fans. This one of them goes to the USB charger, and then this goes to the controller. So I can bundle those up a little bit better, but for now, that's what I've got. Everything's fused. Um, and so, yeah, let me, I guess first I can show you the top before I disconnect everything. Controller, I've got a three-way switch, one position for fans, this one pulling, pushing air out, blowing air out, this one's pulling air in, um, and then this is a really low voltage, really cheap, uh, I think it was a couple bucks on AliExpress battery monitor that you it has a lot of settings you can set it to different types of batteries and I can set alarms for it to start beeping at a certain voltage and I can set it to have the screen time out after so many seconds which I don't have that on right now but I, when I'm using it I'll do that because I'm not gonna I don't need the screen to be on all the time um, and this isn't connected to the switch it's just a USB charger and also tells me voltage so I've got 13.3 volts yeah and that charges super fast I've used it I don't anticipate using this battery to charge a lot of stuff but I just thought it'd be useful if I needed to so, disconnect the battery, I've got this loose right now so I can take it out, do this all one handed, hope it doesn't, there we go, okay, I want to get diesel all over my kitchen, <laughs> alright, um, so this, uh, the fuel I've got running up and comes this way. That way when I prime it, I can see where the diesel is till about right here, which is maybe six inches from where it goes into the heater. So I like that. I like having that visible and it just kind of tucks in around there. Down here, I just bought sheet galvanized steel for ductwork and bent it up and made a two and a half inch shelf. Um, part of the reason is to separate it, um, separate it from the exhaust a little bit, get it a little bit higher, um, so it's not right sitting right next to it. I also have put a sheet of copper here to help dissipate some of that heat from the exhaust running underneath there. I'm not going to take the heater out now. I just got it put in uh, using this uh, gasket seal to seal the exhaust. I wish I had done this before that because then you could see how that's connected. But I've got photos of that. Um, I ran this all last weekend 
it was like 18 below ran it out in the garage for about nine hours worked awesome didn't have any issues um, but once I turned it off and took it all apart to check to see if the stuff had melted it I did have melting between the through hole exhaust and the wall both on the inside and out so that was conducting heat enough to melt the plastic so I took it all apart and had to clean up all that red gasket stuff that was kind of a pain um, and reapply it and get it all back in but what I did was I put a, a quarter like a quarter inch thick piece of uh, made a round piece of plastic to fit between the, the through hole exhaust um, there's a plate then I've got I think three layers of uh, screen like metal screen that I just had thinking that might help dissipate some heat or create more of a barrier between the plate and the plastic then I put some exhaust wrap fiberglass I fit in there I also wrapped so I made the hole going through the plastic bigger so that I could fit a layer of exhaust wrap also between the the whole thing so I did the same on the outside so you can kind of see here I've got the ex exhaust wrap sticking out still kind of not very cleaned up but hoping to not melt that plastic but I I've got a plastic welder and I can I can repair any of that plastic damage but um, it's HDPE and super easy to fix but so that's that solution so right now I just made put this on here because I recently added a backup battery and it's hard to pull out of there without that <laughs> So, um, this is the controller, the switch. Uh, I've got my 50 uh, amp hour battery goes in here. 10 amp hour backup battery goes in here. And it all comes out there. That runs to power the heater. Uh, I have not tested it yet. But I know when I disconnect the main battery, the controller stays on, which is awesome. I don't, I've watched videos, some, I've watched one video of, of a guy doing it, and uh, it, there was a brief uh, pause between batteries, so it, it actually shut off and then came back on, but it put the heater into a cool down cycle, which, or not a full cool down cycle, but it just blew the fan um, and so I'd be fine if that's what it does if it keeps running that'd be great too but um, just thought it'd be good to have a backup battery so I know with these lithium iron phosphate batteries it's hard to really measure without a, uh, is it a shunt or a, well, I don't have the type of battery monitor that can really accurately tell me when it's when it gets low anyway for now this is what I've got and it I think should work pretty well so battery backup battery fuse uh, my air intake uh, combustion air intake goes through here and sits right in there underneath this shelf so it's a yeah, that's another part of the reason where I, why I built that shelf. So you can also see under here, I got my pump mounted. And I think that works perfectly. As far as space goes, it's space is so limited. Um, but there's no kinking in this corner. It just, this rigid, fuel line works really well and um, first time I got this all hooked up and I tested it I had fuel the next day a puddle of 
fuel in the bottom, I didn't have the filter screwed back on, or I didn't have a gasket set at the bottom of this filter in this quiet pump. It's quieter than the one it came with, but still it makes some noise. But anyway, um, I got that. I was looking all over the fuel line trying to find out where that came from, looking for holes, yada yada. But that was it. So. Um, and I sort of just have shims in there temporarily holding that in. For now, it works. I'm still just kind of testing everything. But yeah. So, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed my diesel, diesel heater in a cooler build.